Yes, we are now live. Yes. Well, I like our conversation, Anne, so it's fine. That's what the people don't mind. How's everyone today doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I can sing the Kiri good morning song to you all. Good morning. Um, so, hey, hey, welcome to Reaper Pro Tips, episode bajillion. Uh, <laughs> and we are here uh, to paint some bright colors today that you guys told me yesterday that you didn't know how to use or highlight in shades. So I'm going to show you some uh, triad action that you could uh, use with those, uh, at least as far as I can. Um, so, yes, episode many. Yes, episode too many to count on fingers and toes. You were getting rain. I wish we were getting rain. I was, the dust was so bad yesterday, like grass pollen went up and I honestly like started coughing the minute I walked outside. It was so weird. I've never had a reaction like that before, but they just have different types of uh, trees and, and grasses here. So I assume it was grass pollen because that was the one that was up higher yesterday. But yeah, that was a, that was a new experience for me. So I kind of would like some rain so they would tamp stuff down. Alrighty. Yay, notifications! Moon, moon glums minis. Mmm. Getting a storm. That'll be nice. Yeah, they don't have many... Like, we have rain in the winter, David says, but not many uh, thunderstorms. And certainly not in the summer. We were supposed to get rain, and we got a couple days of cloudy, but we didn't get any rain this weekend. Alrighty, so I'm just mixing up some colors here. I did have to kind of hand mix my punk rock pink because I didn't actually have punk rock pink on hand. So I am mixing it up. Although it looks like I need a little bit more of that. These are definitely, like, this is Neon Colors Day in, uh, in Paintland. There we go. That looks more like punk rock. It's close enough anyway. Close enough. So hello, hello, everybody. And I missed I missed doing going down the list of my official hellos. Um, yeah, I know Justin said that you that just Texas we had a lot of rain last month too. So yeah, we haven't here in like uh, hmm. Maybe a couple of days at this point. It's it's been a while since I saw some rain oh, now. Well, good. Maybe you're drying out. Oh uh, yeah, Drop except that it's there. happening. But you know what that means. <laughs> Getting prepared for you know basically hell on earth. <laughs> Bit prepared for the state trying to kill you. Yes, it, it's trying its best now um, via temperature to to kill off the coronavirus. <laughs> well, there you go. Can't, you can't be sad about that. No, I can. You're right. <laughs> but actually, to be fair, kind of like you, I I would rather have triple triple degree weather and be outside in it than be outside in like single digit weather. Right. Hey, uh, D. D Clearman, I can't actually share formula data that close. Um, Reaper uh, is very very proprietary about its formulations, so I can speak in generalities and tell you that it's uh, several different different shades of red, um, but I cannot. Uh, I cannot verify. Sorry. That's just the way it is. That's company policy. You could try to try to recreate it if you like. There we go. Um, but just so you know, yeah. Alrighty, we're gonna be working with really, 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 really bright colors. As the weather is really nicer in Scotland. Well, that's it. Well, you guys normally get nice weather in the summer though, don't you? Cause I mean, I've been to Scotland in like late spring um, and it was pretty beautiful then. I, I don't mind the rain, though, so, you know. 
Alrighty, let us go to the mini cam. Oh, let us uh, undo our little intro. Ah, I already have done it, and then I I did it again. Ah, yeah, it's one of those days, guys. There we are. All right, so very bright colors, bright, 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 bright. So we has our uh, our hand mixed punk rock pink. We have our alien goo. We have our icy violet. And we have our candlelight yellow, and I totally stole David's because I couldn't find mine. So candlelight, let's a few a few drops so we can look at all these together. Then we can talk about highlighting them, and shading them, and uh, then we can put some on razor razor maw razor mouth, Rawr. who is pretty soon going to be the brightest razor mouth ever. Although this could be kind of fun. Alrighty, so there are our colors. Every day is a Monday. I don't know, I don't know. Well, the great thing about these... Ah. Uh, yeah, but when colors are really simple, D. Clearman, then anything ballpark is almost precise. So I have to be have to be get that careful on that one. So, alright, so the great thing about this is that some of these can almost be used... Like, you can use the same highlight with a couple of these. Um... And uh, some of these could almost be used to highlight or shade each other, like the yellow. If you added more white, you could probably use it there. But let's let's take them on as triads. So let's start with Alien Goo. Alien Goo is a darker, greener version of uh, of a pale spring green. Dungeon Slime is very uh, close to it, but Dungeon Slime has more white and thus has more coverage. You can see in the palette here that this is pretty dang transparent once I add water. So if you want um, a, you want Alien Goo to really cover on a model, start with Dungeon Slime, get a nice solid coat down, and then put a nice coat of Alien Goo over the top, and it will become brighter. Because, of course, Dungeon Slime is not as bright as Alien Goo. That's the problem when you add white, is you lose some of that intensity. And uh, I wanted this to cover... And I wanted it a bit lighter, so that that would be it. Now, because of that, here I'll put the two next to each other. You could technically use Dungeon Slime to highlight, or uh, sorry, yeah, Dungeon Slime to highlight Alien Goo. So there's Dungeon Slime, and I'll put Alien Goo right next to it. Come on, there you go. So yeah, so you can see that the one is notably lighter than the other. So right there in Dungeon Slime, you have your Alien Goo highlight. For an Alien Goo Shadow, there's nothing real close to it. Like, these two are real close. Um, but I would probably go with Naga Green because since this is so bright, you need, um, you know, if you're going to have a, a, a shadow that's that matches it, if you're not going to go for a more muted shadow, then if you're looking for a vibrant, lighter green, I would go Naga. I wouldn't go Cat's Eye, even though Cat's Eye is lighter, because Cat's Eye has ochre in it, and it's more muted. Naga is more intense. So I would say Naga and Alien Goo, and if they're too different for you, then mix these 50-50. So here are, our, here are our colors. Also, if you don't have Dungeon Slime, or you just don't want to necessarily use that to highlight it, or you're looking for a brighter highlight, then you want to do that. Hello, hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um... So then I would use clear yellow or lemon yellow, 9009. Um, I regularly use 9009 to highlight greens with because it has both yellow and white in it. Um, and so you're dealing with, with these guys. Um, so if you drop that out, that is a triad that I would use. Uh, and you can see there's, they're quite different. You might need to do a 50-50 mix of each of these. And here you might want to add a little more white, again, because you're for highlighting. Um, the white is going to make it look more natural, but that, that's, uh, that's around what I would do with Alien Goo. So, Alien Goo out of the way. The yellows are very easy. Candlelight is pretty faded here, but this is Candlelight Yellow 9408. Um, once again, you can go clear yellow on it. Uh, and that would be probably almost its best highlight, uh, or, or again, lemon yellow. Actually, the best highlight for it would be if you have the limited edition color Golden Glow. Um, that's a holiday color and uh, also came out as a promo several times. Golden Glow is the absolute best highlight for candlelight yellow. Um, but if you don't have it, don't worry. Clear yellow is fine. Now, some of you mentioned that you had trouble shading yellow. The obvious, like, darker yellow to go with for candlelight would be Lantern. 
Um, but you could also do a mixture. What I typically like to do is to do a mixture of um, like an ochre or an, or an orange brown and do that instead to take it down the shadows down a little bit more for this. And we'll actually do that on the beast in a moment. Um, you could grab something like weirdly like polished leather and you could use that. You can see how, how this is a very yellowy brown. So if you mixed these two, you could get a darker shadow for candlelight. So that would be your triad for candlelight. Or rough triad, quadrad, if you will. Ah, let's see here. Punk rock pink. Okay, so punk rock is kind of a weird one. You'd almost have to go clear. Uh, I'd almost go with a purple for it. I think, let me grab, maybe monarch. I don't think runic is dark enough. Well, maybe it is. Runic might work, but it's not really bright enough. You probably want it an intense purple. I might use... Um, I might use clear purple on that one. Although it is very dark and you'd have to do a 50-50 mix. Clear magenta isn't dark enough. And uh, and clear red isn't dark enough. So you, you kind of have to look. You could possibly use Succubus Kiss for it. Let me see. Let me put it down there. It might be... Succubus Kiss might be just a little bit muted. But, I mean, if you... Uh, let me see how they mix. Let's get some Succubus Kiss out here which is a beautiful color, of course, in the Dungeon Dwellers boxes. Let's mix in some punk rock. And let's get it down here where you guys can see it. Okay, so that actually makes a beautiful dark rose color. That's actually a very pretty color. Sadly, because of the black in Succubus Kiss, it is more muted. So if you want a brighter uh, shadow for your punk rock pink, I would actually mix in clear purple. Or Monarch Purple. Either of those would work. Monarch is more reddish, and so Monarch might be a better choice. Um, I do not have a bottle of Punk Rock Pink. Oh, Punk, yeah, now you can see the pool. There, so, yeah, sorry, I meant you, I thought you meant we couldn't see the bottle of it, do one. I, I uh, did it. Marigold is similar to Lantern, yes, Krispies. You can, you can watch VOD Zero. If you have less colors, would you just go heavy with the color pigment and just a little white for raising brightness? Yeah. I mean, Mathophile, that's a that's the time-honored way of doing this, right? The only reason that I'm doing it this way is that people ask usually for triads. They want um, the simple in a bottle solution. But, I mean, the answer to all of these for for highlighting is just add white. They just add, you want to add a pure white, usually, um, because they're pretty vibrant. If you add an off-white, it's going to knock them down. Uh, but adding a little bit of white is not going to, yeah, I mean, it is going to lose your saturation, but it's a highlight. I mean, it's, your eye is going to adjust for it. You just, if you want the vibrancy to still stay, uh, stay intact, you just need to make sure that half of the surface is the bright color, uh, and make your highlights smaller. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, a lot of people ask me for, for triads. That's why I'm going this way. However, now that I know that Succubus Kiss and Punk Rock Pink make this awesome pink color, I might have to, uh, use that on a model. I do have this soft spot for pinks every once in a while. I allow myself to paint something pink. Well, lately, I've, I guess I've got quite a bit of pink right now on my uh, table. So I guess it's more than once in a while now. Um, alrighty. So we got that, got that. This is, and we got that. So highlighting with the punk rock pink, like you suggested, actually a great option for highlighting uh, punk rock pink is runic glow. Mixing a little bit of that into it. Um, the other, another great one is the um, breast cancer awareness pink, if you have it. You could also go with a warmer pink, like, say, Milani Rose. That would work quite well, 89502. Um, so those are all good options, or just adding white to the punk rock. Um, so, And whenever you do this, whenever you mix a pink that probably has a slightly different pigment um, you know, variety in it with, uh, with a, another color, always mix a little bit of the one into the other to make sure that they're going to... Um, be uh in harmony right because you don't know what's in this color as opposed to this color you can see that this is more blue you don't know if there's any other colors in the milani rose other than you know what's in here and so always do a 50 50 mix and do a layer of that and then go up to your uh your other color and that will make the two harmonize Yeah, Master Series paint is so huge, Mathophile, because we went for simple in a bottle. So pretty much we were trying to give people all the colors that they would want so they didn't have to mix so that the Reaper line would be. That's what the triads are for. In the core line, the fact that all the paints are in triads is a sh uh, usually, it's either like colors together or it's um, like off-whites all together or liners all together or it's a highlight, shadow, and mid-tone. Um, yeah, well, there you go, Nomad Zeke. So you can mix your BCA pink into 
your uh, your punk rock pink and get a fine highlight. All right, so now we get to the real crazy one of this. Oh, by the way, I want to draw your guys' attention to something. And that is that all these colors go together. Like, they're all saturated at the same level. They all have a little bit of white in them to mute them down. But otherwise, they're quite vibrant. So as far as the level of saturation, these colors are all very similar. And thus, you could utilize them together on a miniature to make a color scheme. You could absolutely use these two together. These two, uh, actually, well, Dungeon Slime, at least, with... Uh, with the Icy Violet is one of the best colors to use with Icy Violet. It's actually almost a perfect complement. Um, it's just really a nice co a nice uh, combo. Um, you could obviously use these together because, you know, you've got purple and yellow and there's a little bit of white in this. I might add a tiny bit more white to this to make it go really well with Icy Violet. But, um, and then the, the pink and the yellow, again, I might add more white just to make it a little more less intense. Um, and you could do the pink and green, but here I might add a little white or a little bit of purple to this to bring it a little darker before I used it with that. So all of these colors go together quite well as far as uh, making a color scheme. So make a note that every color you guys asked about actually works with all the other colors you guys asked about. And you can kind of see that on the, on the board. It, it does look rather harmonious. So let's take some white and add just a drop of it to my yellow because that will give me... A little bit of a lighter color it's going to go a little bit better with this and let's see what colors do I want to put together today it's almost too easy to go with the green and yellow together um, I might have to go I don't know let's just let's just start let's just play with it oh twitch is weird yeah sorry guys if you got frozen stuff Yeah, Pendrake, Pendrake has insane amounts of P uh, BCA pink. Yeah, unfortunately, if you place a lot of orders during October, you are, or fortunately, perhaps, uh, you are going to uh, run into that. Okay, so last thing we were going to talk about was Icy Violet. Icy Violet's highlight is really to mix white in with Icy Violet. It is a very unique color, and it really doesn't have um, a lot of... Uh, possible highlights straight out of the bottle. The other thing you could mix into it is, haha, BCA pink, because it does have a bit of that purple in it. It will take your highlights more toward pink, and then I would probably take your shadows more toward blue. So I would, might mix in some BCA pink for a highlight or some white, and I would uh, mix in maybe some clear blue for a shadow, and that would give you kind of a blue to purple transition. Um, the other color that goes really well with this, and it's going to be coming out for Bones 5 again, is uh, Rich Indigo, which I re-released or will be re-releasing um, for the Bones 5 uh, paints when they come out. I wanted really badly to bring that back um, and uh, to do a couple other things uh, in the indigos there. I wanted black indigo to be uh, an actual color in the line because I use it all the time. So the Bones 5 paints, when they come out, will have rich indigo in it, and that is a perfect shadow for Icy Violet. So make a note. All righty, let's play with this stuff now. Do, 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 do. I guess I need clear purple or monarch purple if I'm going to shade that. Uh, let's see, where's my monarch? So monarch is a beautiful purple that's very reddish, and uh, it doesn't have any black in it. Its darkness is entirely due to the presence of very dark blue pigment. Um, so it's nice that way. It's versatile because you don't have to worry about, like I was talking about the ashy tone of black when I mixed in that uh, succubus kiss with the punk rock pink. Well, you don't run that risk if you use a color with no black in it. So let's try to do a mix of this. Hey, James. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, that's right, yeah. Triads where you shift colors. Um, no, because uh, there aren't mathophile, because that confuses people. Um, my triads have always been straightforward. What The stuff you're talking about is stuff that I do more in the Patreon, where it's like, here is the obvious uh, triad, but here are some alternate triads that you could use and sometimes I will do color shift there. Um, there. There is an exception, kind of, in the yellows triad from the original uh, core line, in that marigold is a very orange yellow, and then it shifts to more of a green yellow at the top end for lemon. Um, but that would be one of the exceptions. Uh, I really try to keep it simple for people. Often they are not sure. The problem is when you put out a triad that shifts color is that it, it almost always requires additional color mixing. Like you really have to create a 50-50 mix between the shadow and the midtone and then another mix between the midtone and the highlight. And although there are triads like that in like in Masteries where you need to mix, they're at least all on the same color gamut. So they're all like purple and they're all like blue or they're all like what, you know, whatever like that. Um, so I was trying, we were trying very hard to make this uh, user-friendly and not require mixing to make them work. 
Uh, therefore, no, we don't have any shifts. I mean, it's easy for you to shift the color yourself. Just grab any two colors and mix them in immediate shades. You can mix any color with any. You can highlight or shade any color with any other color that way. It might look muddy in the middle, but it depends on what color you choose. Or you can paint with really thin paint and uh, do a color shift that way. Let's see here. Um, that's kind of a like, that's a related colors triad, Kroniko, actually. I had an option um, when I did that triad to either do a very, very tarnished copper, which would have been a brown, or to just do an odd verdigris. Like, verdigris is non-color. It's not meant, you're not meant to actually highlight copper with verdigris. That's not actually why that verdigris is in there. It's, it's in there because once you paint your NMM copper, you probably want to put some verdigris in the cracks. And so now you have the perfect color for it um, or use it for streaking. But the other reason I didn't go with a dark brown for the copper triad was that I already had one that was perfect and it's russet brown. So the real, if you want to do like a copper color, uh, a core, or you could probably also use harvest, but it's a little too bright. Um, but russet, which is uh, 91.99 is what I use for my brown, um, for my, for, if I want a very, like a brown penny and like an old penny kind of brown, um, and then work with the other colors. Uh, let's see here. You can strange all you want, Dark Angel. We're all good. And I love Neil Gaiman, so you're in good company. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, I don't know that you could get there from BCA. It might have too much white in it, Pendrake. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want it to go darker, you'd have to mix red or violet or magenta or purple into it, and you'd have to experiment. Like I said, I can't, I can't actually tell you. I know, obviously, since I mixed this from, from heart, you know, from my memory. I know what's in it, but I cannot actually tell you that. Um, my best, uh, my best uh, comment is, is experiment. Um, anyway, so if you guys can see, actually, it's a little hard to see. Let's see if I can get a light on here and get this up here. So this is the color that, um, Monarch Purple, Monarch Purple, I'm going to fit it out so you can kind of see the color there. That's a pretty color, beautiful purple. And the color that it makes mixed with punk rock pink is that, which is still a bit muted, but it's not as muted as the rose color I got mixing in, um, the succubus kisses and most of why it's muted is actually because uh there's white in here so it's taking the monarch a little less vibrant uh so that would be a good shadow actually uh monarch purple mixed with your punk rock pink would be a, a fair shadow for that and i like monarch purple so everybody should own monarch purple all right so let's uh i think i'll do his gills in the pink we're actually uh good morning daffodier no apostrophe uh, yeah no apostrophe zero <laughs> um but yeah so all right here we go let's put some punk rock pink down and uh highlight and shade it doo, 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 doo. it's such a nice bright color it's it's funny that we did a lot of talking on this one before we uh apparently when justin and i were babbling at each other this morning it set a precedent you hear that justin we've affected the stream i talked way too much and wasn't painting enough this morning no yeah, because we already like we're already like twenty minutes in, and I'm only just putting paint on the model. Sounds to me like uh, it's just painting platinum two point <laughs> No, I don't want to go to painting platinum. I like my show the way it is. Besides, I'm I'm not like doing my hair and makeup right before the uh, the show. So, although Sadie always looks beautiful, so I I even with Sadie's hair and makeup, I would not be as beautiful as Sadie. So <laughs> it's just kind of a lost cause. <laughs> Alrighty. The show was a lot of fun, though. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is, Undercrat. I mean, it's it really is like the pastel versions of all of the game tokens you've ever seen for every uh, basic four-player board game you've ever seen. Um, let's see here. That'll be pink. What do we want to do? I think we want to do blue up here and maybe some green down here and by blue i mean uh icy violet so not really blue i'm going to show you how all these colors can work together on the model i should be using a bigger brush for base coating though i really uh don't need to 
But yeah, so if you guys ever wondered what colors went with one of these colors, you now know that all four of these colors go together, as I was saying earlier. So make a note. Um, when you're looking for what colors to use with Icy Violet or Dungeon Slime slash Alien Goo or Lantern Yellow or Candlelight Yellow, sorry, or um, Punk Rock Pink. Uh, and you may, have, may need to darken or lighten them a hair. I lightened the candlelight just a little to make it play better with these other guys because it was a little bit too saturated um, for the amount of white that's in these other guys. But I'm just going to put some happy, we'll just do some quick base coating. And he'll be a very bright monster. But sometimes I think painting your uh, monster's extremely bright colors is kind of fun. We'll just make all of his little scales this color. Do, 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 do. At least for starts. We might change it. This is a fun monster because he has all... Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying, Zewo, is any, any four-player game that, that you've ever had probably uses uh, red, yellow, green, and blue as the token colors, at least uh, old school. I mean, some more avant-garde modern ga day games may put in purple, which I appreciate since I like purple. Um, but yeah, so we're very close to a basic set of colors. Rawr. Now, looking down, you can see that the pink is more saturated and vibrant than the icy violet, but that's going to change when I start highlighting the pink. Uh, I can control how vibrant that pink looks by essentially highlighting it and shading it and reducing the amount of very bright color that shows. Um, that will knock it down a peg without ever changing the color itself. So you can still use punk rock pink, but if you need it to be a little more muted, just highlight and shade it with slightly more muted colors, which you're automatically going to do because when you add white to it, it's going to mute it out a little. So you don't even have to try. This is such a cute monster. I just can't get over how cute this monster is. I have to tell Chris that the monster is terribly cute. All right, let's see. I thought about putting some making his gums a little punk rock pink too. But I can't really tell, like, I can't really tell so much like where his gums end and where his face starts. I don't know, want to make his whole face pink. So I don't know, maybe we'll do a blend. Oh no, he still has a butt, uh, a butt mold line. That's all right. We'll just deal. Okay, so then let's take some green. Let's see, now I'm going to switch back to my other brush because I need to actually paint into uh, areas. I do think I want to add a little Dungeon Slime to my uh, Alien Goo because it will make it cover better. They're such similar colors. They really, really, really are. So do feel free to mix them at your whim. It works. It has no, no issue with it. Hey, Sigwolf. But yeah, we're playing with pretty pastel colors today. We're painting um, um, uh, not Easter Bunny, Easter Bunny. <laughs> he's, he's just like a happy Easter Bunny, only he's not. He needs like long ears though, I guess, and a poof tail. He could get a little bunny tail. That would be adorable. Now I'm probably going to wait. Too. He's already looking like a Pokemon. That only makes it worse. So let me get this in focus, folks. I'm going to move my palette. Get this uh, up here so that we can focus on him. Let's try to do that actually in the middle of the camera. There we go. Alrighty, then let's load up with some uh, some green. Do -do 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 -do. So as you can see, all these colors really do go together on the model. Actually, you know, I like him a little better on, over on top of the palette, though. You can see. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you need a lighter background. I have some light paper, but I don't really want to reach over and spend time grabbing it out. I suppose I could switch to my light blue. He might look better on that. The camera likes to adjust for various things. Let me see if I can switch to a better background. Because I don't really want to paint over my palette today. Let's see. Lift you up. Palette. Let's go with the light blue and see if the happy monster is happier over light blue. 
Happy monster? Happy monster, yeah, that's perfect for him. Now we can see the colors, and they, and they actually look like the colors they are. So remember that, guys. When you're taking photos of your models, the backdrop color absolutely doesn't ma does matter. Your camera will adjust for it. So if you've got a dark model and you're using a light backdrop, your model will look extremely dark in photographs. Not good. And if you're trying to photo a light colored model on a dark backdrop, it will totally overexpose it. That's what cameras will tend to do. You can, of course, adjust some of these things after the fact, but as Justin and I have discussed before, getting the best possible photo out of the gate saves you a lot of work. Get a little green haunches on him. He looks like a murderous parakeet. Yes, I would I would agree with that. Actually, I'm going to take off that old line. It's annoying me. And then we'll start uh, as our paint. Mostly I'm uh, I'm doing base coating so that all my paint has time to dry. So then we can uh, do some clever highlighting and shading. Just doing some scraping to get some mold line off of this guy. Didn't really have time to do it last night. Come on, little guy. Yeah, Rawr, he says. And of course, this mold line over the, the bone there is quite awkward to get to. Thank you, uh, whoever put this on mold. Random person who put this on mold. Ah! All right, I'm going to throw the model around because I can. All right, back on there, Mini. Sit, stay, be the murderous parakeet you are. There, now it's a little bit better. Alrighty. Now, we want these colors to look like they belong together even more. So what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use some of this green to maybe highlight some of these indigo scales. We'll do a color shift like uh, we were talking about earlier, maybe. First, let's get his little, I think I want his face green. And maybe we'll do a Naga green wash over the face here. There are times, uh, there are limited times when I go for a wash. Like if I was painting this myself and I had all the time in the world, I wouldn't go for a wash. I'd start with the shadow and I'd highlight it up. But all this little detail in here, when we're painting faster, like we do on this stream, um, is going to be really hard to see or pick out unless you put a wash over it. So I'll probably do the Naga green that I suggested to you guys, and you can see how that looks. He's very angry about being very bright. Or maybe he just got made fun of for his color scheme, and so that's why he's very angry. There we go. Got some stuff on there, some green, missed his front leg. Art is pain, yeah. Oh, sorry, somebody asked about the number. Boop, raise your mouth, he's the cutest monster ever. He says, I'm adorbs. I am such a Pokemon. I have tons of teeth. Yeah, raise your mouth is adorable. I love this. When when this, this, this model came out right before I left Reaper and I was grabbing some Bones Black because I knew I wanted to demo on Bones Black down the road, and this was uh, one of the ones that had just come out, and I had to snag it. Especially because people have asked me how to do Teeth and Claws, and yesterday we showed how to do Teeth and Claws. He was a great model for that. All right, by the time we get all this down, hopefully our green will be dry, and I can put a wash over it. Getting all his little scales. He's adorable. I love his big paws. Alrighty. Um, 
No, Mazik, uh, David did not buy that yesterday. He argued that Razor Mouth is merely an adolescent form of a carnivore. And uh, he did it fairly convincingly. So uh, I don't know. Uh, he probably gets eaten if he gets caught, but uh, he probably also consumes things smaller than him, and it is the, which is kind of the way nature works. So He doesn't have any flat teeth is the problem. He can't be an herbivore. He could only be a filter feeder. But then why have the teeth? So, that was a fairly convincing argument. I prefer to think of him as an adolescent animal. So he's probably pre prey when he's tiny. And then he gets to be a predator when he gets big. Big and strong. Yeah, exactly what Duke Clearman said. Hey, Scousey. Hey, Twisted Oma. Yeah, but he's, I mean, he's almost as tall as a human. Like, if you ran face-to-face -face with this sucker, he'd be, like, he's pretty bulky, too. Like, you could put two, and Dark Sword models are a little bit taller than most Reaper models, but, I mean, if you put him next to the Dragon Ken, they should be fighting. You know, the spines are almost as tall as the Dragon Ken, so, you know, that's pretty scary if you run up against that. He bulks as much as two humans, I think. Alrighty. Let's get a little bit more on the back here, and then we'll do the wash over the green. Just need another coat on the back. Um, Icy Violet actually covers pretty well, but I had thinned it. Morning, Valandar. There we go. There, that's a more solid coat. Should have done the spikes yesterday too. I know, I could. We'll really make him a cockatiel or a parakeet. We'll put some yellow up here. Gotta use all the colors. I'm going to have to lighten that up a bit. It's still a little bit too intense. But it's going to... Putting this yellow here is going to have the effect of making the Icy Violet look more purple. Because you're introducing a complementary. There's not enough room to do a pattern, really, Nomad Zeke. I mean, I could do multicolored spines like the Lionfish, but that would be a bit much. Look at how busy this model is already. Um, so I think that getting him more busy would probably not be a good idea. Uh, so, I mean, there are some models that, that go well with patterns. Like Spirit Beast, I did patterns on him because when it came down to it, his fur was pretty boring. Like, it was just fur. It was pretty unremarkable. Um, but here, here we've got all these very sharply defined scales, and we've got gills, and we've got the skin and all the teeth and all that. I, there's just a lot going on. If you highlight all these scales and stuff, then it, it just it seems too much to me. That's why I wouldn't do a small pattern on the spines, you also have to think about like where you're putting your freehand. When you do things like a pattern, you're pulling the eye up to that area. So if you want the eye to go in this area, then you want your tightest painting to be in the face area. If you put a bunch of detail up here, people are going to look up here and not look at the face first. So always be very intentional with where you put freehand in patterns. It definitely affects the way that people look at your model. Let's see here. All right. Good luck. Hey, nice to see you. So this is not beautiful yet. This is just bright and shiny. The mouth is beautiful because that's actually mostly done. Um, but yeah, so I am base coating a Technicolor uh, Razor Mouth today. Technicolor Razor Mouth. Um, and we're going to do a wash on his green. So let's do a wash. All right. So you can use our wash medium for this if you don't want to have to count as much. So let's use two drops of Naga Green. Um, I might need to mix it up just a little bit more. Was... Naga takes a bit of shaking because of the different pigments in it. They tend to want to rise to the top. And it's a heavy, heavy uh, bodied base, so it wants to sink. Where is my brush on sealer? Lately, my ratio has been four drops to what brush on sealer to every one drop of paint and then two drops of water. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And sometimes I don't even go that far, depending. 
Um, I kind of just look at it. Every color is different. You really can't have one wash formula for every color. It just doesn't work. Um, if you only put sealer in this, it will be goopy. It will have an odd goopy streaky texture. You do not want that. That's why you also add water. Brush on sealer helps keep it in solution, but you also need the water. So there's two drops. Mix, mix, mix. Nope, I need the other two drops. And two more drops. There. So my original formulation for this color is probably correct. Two drops water, four drops sealer, one drop paint. And I doubled the formula. Alrighty. Let's see what we got. Now this is going to take this green darker, which means it's going to start to fight a little bit with this color. Like right now, part of the reason that Icy Violet and our Dungeon Slime Alien Goo mixture is working is that the Icy Violet is darker than the other. So um, we might have to adjust. Obviously, we're going to go back and re-highlight the screen skin. That's going to take it up again. But you, you've got to be aware of that. When you're, when you're looking at a model, you have to look for light-dark contrast in addition to color contrast. And if you get too, too much of things at the same shade then, you know, where you don't have any real lights and darks, then things uh, start to blur together and it doesn't work as well. So that's color composition. Just kind of dab on my wash. Doo -doo -doo. Now this is a very bright wash. It's a very intense, saturated wash because we, we're being technicolor with our razor mouth. And it may not be dark enough, actually, looking at it. I thought it would be dark enough, but it might not be. We'll see. It is going to add a bit of shadow, but it's not outlining the details like I'd hoped it would. Possibly because a lot of these details are very tiny, so it's harder for it to outline them. Out back here, I suspect it will do better. Yeah. So back here, it's doing a better job of kind of uh, doing some nice shading in the uh, in between all these big bulky bits. But here around the mouth, it's uh, not quite dark enough to bring out those tiny details. So be aware when you do a wash, the more, the more difference you have between your base coat and your wash color as far as light and dark, the more uh, it will bring out your details. So right now I'm okay with this because I can come back and highlight with my, uh, with my green there and bring things out. And it didn't take it down as much as I feared. I did thin it quite a bit, so it is pretty transparent. Uh, as far as here, you can see it's very colored water. So in actuality, if I wanted the details to come out more on the face, I would have to add another drop of paint because it's just not enough. I was a little bit, I wanted to do for, full formula because it was quite a bit darker than the uh, Alien Goo, but in reality, it turns out that is not enough. So you can see you, uh, we have kept the saturation level up because the Naga is very uh, a very bright green. So we have, uh, we're still in harmony as far as our lights and brights go. I'm not sure if it's a Dreadmere monster. It wouldn't surprise me, Nomad Zeke. Yeah, well, and we'll get to that, right? I mean, I'll probably do some lining. I just haven't done it yet. Um, Cause I'll probably, I'll definitely do a line back here because you put a line, you line on the model wherever one surface meets another. So when I change textures from the skin of this face to the scales of the back and like here on the horns and all that and the, the texture of the gills um, up by the face and up by the skin back here, you're going to have lining behind all of that if you're doing it, you know, consistently. Like if you want everything to stand out, you line. And on this model, which is so very cartoony, using in dark lines like this isn't a bad thing because um, it's just it's just going to bring out emphasize the cartoony nature of the thing uh, i started with brown liner so i'll continue with brown liner i'll, I'll uh, demonstrate that yeah there'll be bones i'm not going to use i want uh, contrast actually math of files so remember the m number one rule in miniature painting if you want your models to look good is contrast the highest contrast i have right now is between the mouth and the rest of the model because of that dark base that I did. So what I really want here is contrast. So I'm going to be definitely doing these and these, the spikes and spikes and spikes, all the same, um, all bone color. 
not only for that reason also, but because it also makes these, ties these areas in to the claws and the mouth. So then the eye is like treated with, you know, there, there are definite spots of this that move or move the eye around the model. Um, you never want to do something heavy on just one area of the model. You, if you can, you always want to spread it out. So, I mean, I will have it down here on the feet, but it's even better if I can have that spike, the spike color pattern, um, all this stuff repeated on other parts of the model. Contrast is king. If you ever have options, try to choose the one that is higher contrast. One hundred thousand channel points. Very cool. It could be just about anything you want it to be. Razor Mouse says he's uh he's not adverse to being you know related to Murlocs, but. We already have the teak, um, though, and they're they're fish people, so they're probably a little closer. Meant to be, uh, well, what's the fish race? Locanth? I can't remember what the fish uh, race in D and D is. Do, 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 do. So we'll just gently paint in our spikes here. Plus, if I use this same color, as a lining, that also ties everything together. Although it is a bit dark, but uh, if I was going for a very naturalistic model, I probably wouldn't go this dark with lining on this. I would actually utilize, uh, and I may just, I may utilize brown liner's uh, special ability, which is that if you thin it, you can get a more subtle line. There, we've got some spikes. And the also other advantage of, of doing these uh, spikes is not only to repeat this color, but just the fact that they're so dark. So the rest of the model is so bright and light that having something dark like the mouth is, uh, is a nice contrast. Spike, Spike, Spike. You could name him Spike. Unoriginal of us, but he looks like a Spike. Do, do, do. Boop. Ah, okay, that definitely had some old line on that. Or some extra plastic bits that I didn't quite get off with my knife. Both. There, it's a bit better. There. All right, so that's a little bit more harmonious. So Hagen, that's it. That's a whatever, really. Hey, he results the he 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 definitely takes offense at the word monstrosity, even if it's suitable. It sounds like an insult. I think he would be very angry with you for that. Of course, he's already angry. He obviously has some anger management issues. Or maybe they're just hunger management issues. If he's growing really fast, he's just always hungry. And that's why his mouth is open. Alrighty. Let's do some lining around the face because it's dry. Let's thin down our brown liner to get a more subtle line. I'm going to throw some water into it. The nice thing about the liners is that they are naturally translucent. So if you want a line that is not as big, dark black... I apologize for nothing. You don't have to because he's not coming to get you, Mathophile. Not unless you buy him. I mean, then he will come to your house. But oh, Dreadmere expansion box. All right. All right. So the nice thing about the liners is that they are translucent. So if you thin them down, you can get a much more naturalistic line. You don't have to go quite so dark um, if you don't want to. So I'm gonna try a lighter line on this and see if I like it or if it's not enough. And if it's not enough, I'll add some more liner into my mix to make it darker. Because this is a pretty pretty pale uh, line that I have going on right here. So essentially with lining, you're just gently putting a line between two areas of the model. In this case, the face and the scales. 
And lining is just like um, kind of a simple shading technique. So it's like forcing shading. Uh, it just gives you that dark line and it's uh, it's not really a replacement for shading, but on small models, it almost can be um, on very small models. But what you're essentially doing is you're simulating the shadow between areas, right? There's a shadow here, there's a shadow there, there's a shadow there. Anywhere you look, there's a shadow between your sleeve and your arm. There's, you know, if you're in the right position to see it, you know, there's stuff like that. Wherever one surface meets another. So this is still a little wet, so I'm going to actually paint it down first and then line it. He looks very hungry, Rupert Collins. You are correct. I think he's just growing really fast. He's at that at that stage of adolescent growth. He's an adolescent uh, boy who uh, will essentially inhale your entire refrigerator in two days, assuming your refrigerator is fully stocked. Right now, our refrigerator is not fully stocked, so an, an adolescent uh, human being would completely destroy our refrigerator in probably three hours. It's a good thing we don't have one in the household. There we go. He could be teething. That is true. Then he's much younger than we thought, though. Leave that little line there. And see how that's sharpening up all the details. Like, when you do that, you sharpen up your details. You, you draw more attention to each space being separate um, and each item being separate. And then when you come in and you do some highlighting and shading, say, on our gills, let's do that real quick. I've got my Monarch Purple open. I'm just going to use Thinned Monarch. I'm going to go shade the inside of this area. behind. Right behind is, it's probably an ear, so I'm going to kind of just put some purple in there. And I'm going to shade around the outside of his gill area just real quick. And that's going to slide our pink more toward purple because I'm uh, putting purple shadows in it. And then, once I have that, I will grab some white and I will highlight our, our gills real quick. Where's my white? There it is. Hey, Dan, it's uh, it's cool out here. Like, the state attacked me yesterday with a possible, with, like, grass allergy. Like, it, I had a coughing fit when I went outside to take Curie out in the afternoon. So there's just something in the air that attacked me. But that was the first time I've run into anything like that. Um, otherwise, it's I can't believe these people have such beautiful weather all the time. It, it's really not fair. And I really do like the town I'm living in. I, it is the town I was born in, so it's kind of fun to... I haven't gone over to where my old uh, apartment is, though. Like, my first home ever outside of the hospital. My dad gave me the address so I can, uh, I can head over. I think it's less than a mile from where I'm currently living. Ooh, new fridge twisted Oma. That's exciting. You know that you're like over 30 when new appliances are exciting. So just adding some white to your punk rock pink is a fine solution. You can, as I said earlier, also add runic purple or um, breast cancer awareness pink, which a lot of you have, uh, have a lot of. So that would be a good uh, solution. And you can just add a little bit of white. Now, gills often have striations, so I want to rinse off my brush, reload it. Let's see if I can get this to focus on his mouth. Yeah, there we go. There's his, there's his mouth. Mouth, 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 mouth. And now you can see the little striations on his uh, claws that I did. But let's get some of this pink before it dries. I did the mouth yesterday, so if you want to see lots of uh, focus on the mouth, um, go ahead and take a look at uh, yesterday's stream, Pendrake, the VOD of it, or the, or the YouTube video of it. So I'm just doing some little stripes, highlighting his gills. This will also change the color. Like every time you do a highlight and shading, you will slide to the color of your base one way or another. Um, because you're adding 
uh, you're changing. You know, it's not just punk rock pink anymore. It's uh, it's punk rock pink plus purple or plus white or both. And so that makes the area look different. So you can kind of plan for that. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, I just, I have allergies, but usually it's like, like in Texas, it was mold. Like here, I actually, uh, there are days where I don't need an allergy pill out here, which is, uh, I've been having like the only other where the only other place I ever encountered that was when I lived out uh, near Baltimore, uh, North and I always thought it was because the ocean was really close and it probably was sucking a lot of stuff out to sea. So, I mean, here is also close, relatively close to the ocean, about the same distance I was before. So it's possible. Um, I don't know. I mean, I still have allergies, environmental allergies. So it's inevitable that some days it's just going to hit me. You just deal. I took a Benadryl. I was fine. I just think when it gets dry out here, there's probably a lot of stuff that gets kicked up into the air. See, look at his little gills are coming out. Oh yeah, dust storms in Arizona would be awful. Yeah, I've I've only visited my folks in AZ, um, usually in the winter and springtime, so it's not nearly as bad as like I met. I imagine it gets in the summer. Otherwise, I think Arizona is a beautiful state. I really like it. It would be one of the states I would consider moving to. I think desert is beautiful, so. There we go. We got some nice gill action going on. Let's continue to increase my stripies. I added a little bit more white for this uh, second round of stripies. I think he's actually, his gills look very pretty. Let's see, get that and that. And I'm not putting um, this white layer across the entire stripe that I did earlier. I'm just getting the very edge. Just how you get that kind of blended radiating look. We got winter in Texas. It was kind of like the winter because it's always ice. I don't mind snow. Winter in AZ is really pretty. It's like spring elsewhere. <laughs> like I love the temperature. I would go out walking a lot with my mom. All right, guys. So there's uh, there's your highlighted punk rock pink. So that actually is looking really good with these surrounding colors. I think you'll agree. Um, quite nice. I'm looking a bit more at what I might need to do to get a little more contrast here around these areas. I think I just want to paint on. The other thing you can do with washes is you can actually just layer them on in areas that you want them. I think I am going to add a little more Naga green though. I want this to be a little bit thicker. I want a little more results a little faster. So I think I'm going to get to layering. My wash did not, uh, did not please me appropriately. Now it will be punished by turning it into layering. I really like snow like every once in a while like I don't want a whole winter of it there's a reason I moved away from Wisconsin and I'm not tempted to move back not ever and my allergies were horrible there like my pretty much my my state that I mostly grew up in is always trying to kill me so no urge to move back I do go to visit my family there my brother and his family are still there and so is so are my parents for half the year so they go th go up there for summer and then they go back to AZ for the winter So I'm just pretty much painting on some of my Naga green now in areas that I want it to be darker to make things come out a little bit more and see how that's coming along. But you can see still these colors all do work together. So next time you want to use Icy Violet and you don't know what goes with it, now you know. And of course you can always reach for neutrals. 
Like it, with the pastel colors, I usually would reach for dark browns. Um, you could also reach for white, like either with a gray base or a uh, or a cream colored base, like creamy ivory. Um, both of those would work great with these kind of colors. And of course, pure black and pure white, like like black would be fine with this. You don't want to go with any gray because uh, when you're dealing with colors that are this bright, um, putting grayed out colors next to them makes it look bad. Makes the grayed out colors look wrong or the brights will look odd or something like that. So be cautious if you're using muted colors next to bright colors. It's usually one of the color rules I lay down for people who are new. Do not use bright colors with, new, with uh, muted colors, colors that have a lot of gray in them or that are not very bright. Those do not go well together. If you're using muted colors, then use muted colors throughout. The one exception is if you're using a bright color as an accent color, like a glowing, like say you're doing a wizard in like blue grays and you know other like muted muted colors that are kind of uh, dark and brooding and not bright. Uh, but he has a staff with a crystal in it. If you want to use like clear magenta to make the staff crystal really bright, you can do that. It's just a small area, but. Don't pick two main colors that one is really bright and one is really grayed out. Like if you try to use olive drab and clear magenta, you will uh, you will not have a very good looking model. Yeah, that's pretty much it, Crispies. I grew up in Wisconsin, so I get it. Um, don't use muted colors for leathers. Use, use, um, uh, or you, you have to use, if you use muted color for leather math file, use neutral muted colors. So again, dark browns, black, um, medium browns, medium dark browns can be okay. It depends on the bright color. If you're using bright greens, then using ruddy leather, like uh, a red brown is perfectly acceptable, but do not use something like driftwood or even like, uh, like leather brown even probably isn't vibrant enough. Uh, you gotta watch it. Gotta watch it or it won't look good. Bottom line is that very saturated colors tend to fight with very muted colors. You can always find an exception if one of the colors is very very light and the other one is very dark. So what I'm saying here, if you think about it, is we're back to contrast like I was talking to you about earlier. So if you must use a muted color next to a bright color on your model like those are your main colors one needs to be bright one needs to be light and the other one needs to be dark you you essentially need to have some contrast in there to make them play better together um otherwise you will not have optimal results when you're trying to learn like color theory there are basic rules that you can violate but you have to know the rules in order to violate them. It really is that way. I mean, the old masters used to say it, and it's absolutely right. Uh, these guidelines that I give you, like don't use bright with muted, um, they're guidelines, right? They're meant to help you not get into trouble. You can violate them. Great painters violate them all the time, but they know how to violate them. So it's, uh, it's a matter of that. I always advise people learn how to kind of create muted color schemes and bright color schemes on their own in isolation. Then they try to push things and see, you know, how they like it or don't like it, you know. But in general, if you look at a model that you really like, um, you can you can kind of analyze, even if you look at a painting, or, you know, that you really like, kind of analyze what the artist has done with muted and bright colors. You will often find that if there is a bright color present in a muted piece, the rest of the piece may be very dark because uh, it's more dramatic that way and you can get those colors to work together because contrast. Baroque paintings actually did that a lot. They had a lot of dark and light and they had a lot of muted browns, but they also had some bright colors. And so they just were very good at playing the contrast off of each other at the various pieces of the painting so that it all worked together. Let's see what we got. Um, Sigwolf, again, contrast. If you're going to try to do different colors of leather, 
and again, it matters. Your your basic color st color uh, pattern will always matter here, but you can always go with say. Let me grab. Hold on. I will show you what you could do. Well, actually, I can kind of show you now. So you could always go with a dark brown, which is almost black, like walnut or black and brown, and a ruddy brown, like ruddy leather, which is more of a reddish color and highlighted up appropriately. And then you could go with a very yellow leather, like polished leather. Or um, the other one I, I like to reach for is chestnut gold, which is like a more saturated version of leather brown. So if you use a golden leather, a reddish leather, and a dark neutral leather together, you can absolutely use three colors of leather all in one model. Um, if you're going to use more neutral ones, then it gets a little trickier. But again, if you normally aim for a yellowish leather, a reddish leather, and a dark leather, you can get away with three leather colors, no problem. Beyond that, you probably have, would have to go pale. Like if you wanted four leather colors, you'd have to go with like a really, like almost a white leather um, or an off-white leather. Yeah, you could do that too. If you started with a basic medium light brown, like say leather brown, and then you used like, you know, you used a reddish wash here or a, uh, an orangey wash here or a dark brown wash there, you could get the same effect, you know. But again, as you, as you point out, if there's splashing colored washes all over the place, you know, it may or may not be easy for you to duplicate that, right? It's, it's, uh, it sounds haphazard, it probably looks haphazard, but they probably have a lot of experience with it. So they know how to make it look good. I, uh, I usually prefer a more methodical approach. I would like, I would block in my colors with, uh, with those colors that I just talked about. I would definitely take uh, one, the base coat on one more golden, the base coat on another more red, base coat on another more neutral dark, do it that way. And then you always have the option to also go with black and white leather. You could you could get, you know, a crap ton. And if you really wanted to, you could also do shiny black patent leather, which has blue highlights, and you could put another color of leather in that way. So in reality, you could probably put six colors of leather on one model. And it would work. But you should spread them out. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Um, heavily, the problem is that a lot of leather actually weathers to the same color. And if you're trying to do weathered leather, that's going to be, um, yeah, it's not as varied as you think it is. Uh, I guess it depends on the base color of the leather, but I mean, when it comes down to it, almost all leather is going to go to that light yellowish tan color when it's weathered. Like when you really grind off the edges, um, with a few exceptions, but so you gotta keep that in mind too. Hold on, let me get this guy in focus. Focus, dude, focus, 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 focus. There we go. There's just little fins. I am highlighting his green. I'm going back with uh with our alien goose slash dungeon slime to highlight his green. So yeah, I mean heavily weathered leather almost all of it will still go to kind of a color and if you look at it you will see what I mean but it'll all go to kind of a pale that's even a little bit uh, too yellow a little orangier I think I need but you get the idea right it'll all go to kind of a pale orangey um, yellowy color like that's the base leather color right and then the treatment that you do on the top of the leather is what gives it the, the dark or light or whatever, you know, reddish color. Um, and maybe the type of leather also affects that. But it's all going to go when you, when, you, when you crack a black leather belt or crack a, uh, a reddish leather belt or a dark brown belt, it's all going to go to that same color of leather underneath. Um, and saddle leather, same way. Um, you know, it, when it cracks it, it cracks light. Um, so my advice to you is if you're doing weathered leather, look at a lot of, uh, examples. Uh, you'll see a lot of modeled patterning. Um, but again, then you're still going to want to, you know, start with several different colors. It's, it can get titchy. And I think on 28 millimeter, it's very difficult to carry off. Um, I think it's a lot easier to carry weathered, le weathered leather off on a bust where you have the room to really create, um, you know, that, that patterns that you see in the scuff marks 
Um, I have an example of that. It's actually, it's almost time to quit. Let me grab Mr. Grumpy and show you what I mean. I would just do, I would do different leather colors and then, yeah, I mean, it really depends. Like boots are going to crack differently than they're going to weather differently than, um, other stuff. So hold on, let me grab a, an example. Oh, I can't grab an example. No. Nope. To, to grab an example would be to wake up the sleeping Kiri and I'm not going to do that because then her butt may activate and I'm going to have to rush her outside. So, all right. Well, I was going to show you Mr. Grumpy, but okay. So you need to look up some examples probably, Sigwolf. Um, boots are going to crack. Let me see. Do I have anybody with boots? Looking around. Do I have any examples of models with boots? Dang. I don't know if I do. Oh yeah. Hold on. Come here, model. You are going to make my example. All right. So actually she's got several. So, all right. So say you're doing this model. Say, say you're painting a boot. The, the crack is going to be here. It's going to, there are going to be cracks here. There may be cracks, um, in the back, you know, so, and your cracks are going to be different than your highlight color. So if you're painting black boots, you're going to highlight with maybe a blue gray or, you know, something like that, but the cracks are still going to be a lighter brown. It's just really hard to get it to work sometimes, um, on a small model on a belt your cracks are going to be vertical because that's the way the belt is wearing. It's, it's, it's going around the model. So your cracks are going to be in a specific place. So to have it carry the effect that you want a weathered, worn, cracked leather, um, you really need to pay attention to where, what, what direction your cracks are going in and where they would naturally appear, which would be at, at parts of strain, right? Where they're wrapping around things or where they're being creased regularly. So this model is very precarious right now. So I probably should have glued her back down before I grabbed her, but that's the figurehead. Yeah, Stephanie. Ron said I could paint it if I wanted, so I grabbed it and dragged it with me out here to California, and eventually I will paint it, but not right now. But, but yeah, so that's the thing with, with weathered leather. You're dealing with two things, right? Not just with the weathering, but also with highlights, and those are two different things. They're not the same. Uh, which is why I say that to do really good weathering, you probably need, you know, you you uh, may find it more rewarding to do it on a bigger model. But you can still do it on a 28. You just need to, like, make sure that, like, if you're doing cracks in the belt, that they're vertical. And that you first highlight and shade the belt normally before you add the weathering, I would say. Uh, you may need to add some extra highlights once you do the cracks. But it depends on the scale. For a 28 millimeter model, it's probably just not necessary. All right, so I brought out the details around his face by shading more with my Naga green and then coming back with my uh, my highlights here and mixing a little bit of white with my alien goo to uh, pick up some more edges and little bits of uh, bits of area here. And up here on his eye ridge, I can do another uh, a broader highlight because the light is going to be hitting it. So like that. So that really makes his uh, his stuff come out. Actually, Valandar, just look, uh, just do a Google search. I like, I find some really good um, leather references. When I was painting Soldier, um, when I looked up leather pouches, worn leather bag, you know, worn leather belt is a great, uh, a great Google search that you can do. There are all sorts of like artist reference photos or just general stock photos of such things out there. Um, and looking at enough of them will probably find you a subject that's similar to what you're trying to paint. Leather is a subject that could take up, you know, 10 streams, frankly. I like, I can't, I really don't have the time to go into it here and now. Um, I've done a couple of uh, things on it on my Patreon, which actually I suppose it's now time to plug. Um, and thank you, by the way, all of you. I've gotten several people sign up for my Patreon recently, and I'm very excited that we're almost to 1100 now, uh, which was my previous record um, around that area. So I'm very happy. Thank you so much. Uh, it makes me super thrilled. Um, and hey, it keeps Kiri in dog biscuits. And I, and I don't joke. I just put in a big Amazon order for dog biscuits this morning. <laughs> uh, so Patreon directly funds my dog's biscuit habit. Thanks, guys. Um, but yeah, there's my Patreon. Thank you, Stephanie, for linking to it. Uh, Patreon.com slash painting big. Uh, I want to do more on leather because uh, really, like you say, you know, on 28, it's, it's very different from when you have a bigger model to do. So... Um, 
maybe I'll maybe I'll grab a, a ranger model or a rogue and see what I can do on the leather and uh, do a demo for you guys. Actually, I'll write that down. I was just brainstorming a whole list of topics that I wanted to cover the other day, um, just yesterday, because it's the beginning of the month. So I wanted to uh, make sure leather 28 millimeter, different colors. There it is now on my list. So it will eventually show up on my Patreon. Um, it may also show up here, but uh, I, it's always different when I'm doing it here than I'm doing it for than when I'm doing it for Patreon because it's uh, it tends to be a lot more focused on the Patreon. Where I can I can be a lot more methodical in the way that I cover a topic um, step by step and things like that. Don't get distracted by you know talk about whether a monster is or herbivorous or a carnivore. Oh, if I paint, um, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, it, it depends like on the weekends, often David and I play board games and we cook and, and we do other fun stuff. Um, but we usually hobby every day. Um, just a little bit, if nothing else, like last night, I put up a picture on the Patreon actually in the Knights forum. I finished the tattoo on my dark elf. So my dark elf now just needs, uh, his hair done his eyeball eyeballs and eyebrows. Um, <laughs> don't it? Yeah. Yes. I don't have people trolling me when I'm doing my Patreon stuff. But yeah, I wanted a, a dragon. Now the back, I'm just going to highlight this a little bit because I want the back of the head to be somewhat in shadow. Um, but I want the dragon's tail to wrap around back here. So I still have to do that. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is, this is uh, of course, a bust from uh, Hera. Hera Models. Uh, they have an academic line of simple busts that are really meant to be practice or class busts. And so I ordered that one. A lot of people did uh, on my Patreon. Just to practice a bust. It's a it's a good model to practice. Hera models, yes. H E R A models. If you look up academic and elf, you will get that one. I chose to do mine as a drow because, well, why not? And also I wanted to experiment with that skin tone. Um, but yeah, so you guys are seeing now how this guy's coming together, and the pink really does go with the green. Um, and then once I do this indigo, maybe we'll do the indigo tomorrow because I can dig out my rich indigo highlight it up, do these, highlight these spines. I mean, talk about eye color, actually. You know what? He totally needs to have a yellow eye because I've got this yellow up here and I don't have it anywhere else. And usually you want to repeat colors if you can around the model. So I will first undercoat with white because the only way you're going to get a really bright yellow eyeball is by doing a white undercoat first. And tomorrow also, let's talk more about yellow. So tomorrow let's do purple and yellow. Let's do our icy violet. And our candlelight yellow, maybe we'll do the other side. Maybe we'll actually do it in yellow so I can show you guys how I would shade it and highlight it. Um, and uh, we'll do the scales here just to show different colors you could use for shading um, on the, the icy violet to make it look different. Uh, but yeah, I would use, so here, I'll, let me show you one of the things you could use to shade. <laughs> I know, Francis, I've been doing this for a while now, right? Since uh, December of 2018 is when I finally decided I'd been wanting to do a Patreon since they started it uh, because I thought that it was a teaching uh, format that I would really enjoy and I have not been wrong. Uh, so, okay, so this is polished leather. It's a very, um, very vibrant yellowy brown. And so it actually makes a great color to mix in to yellow to make a pretty shadow. So this results in more of an ochre color, more of a mustard color. And I can paint that over the top of this white and have it be nice and bright. And then I can put my candlelight over the top of that and just use this essentially as a shadow color for my yellow. It's a little bit browner. It, it is very mustardy actually. It's very much like, like brown mustard. You can see it back here. Um, but it's a great shadow for this color here. So like if you put them together on the palette, you can see that it makes a natural shadow and it's not muddy. The time when you get trouble, get in trouble with yellow is if you're using anything with black in it to shade it. That will create a greenish hue and it will take it ashy and it will take it dirty. So you don't want to ever use any color with black in it to shade your yellow. Um, this color, this, uh, this polished leather, if it does have black, it has a tiny, tiny bit of black, but I honestly don't think it does. I don't think it has any black in it. Not looking at how it's reacting with the yellow. So you're pretty safe using polished leather 9430. 
And you could use the, the pure form of polished leather if you were like doing this on a cloak or something and you wanted to have a deep shadow in the cracks, this would be, this would work. And then your moderate shadow would be this and your, your candlelight would be your main color. And then you could highlight it up with white or add lemon yellow or golden glow. I am sorry I'm keeping you up late, uh, Francis, reading all my stuff. <laughs> If, after you read all my stuff and watch all my videos, you have more questions, you should uh, just uh, let me know. And uh, maybe I can do a follow-up video on something. So then I'm doing a highlight on his, on his eye. I'm, I'm filling in most of what I just did with the candlelight yellow. And since I have that nice mustardy yellow, because the great thing about the polished leather and candlelight mixture is it really covers quite well um, over that white. And so it also fixes the coverage issue that yellow has. You always want to put yellow, when you're painting yellow, always use a white base coat. I mean, either that or you're going to have to lay down a really heavy coverage brown, light brown, um, to uh, offset the uh, issues of coverage with yellow. And yellow pigments are just naturally a very fine pigment grind. They just generally have a hard time covering. Even the best high coverage quote unquote yellow is still a yellow. So yeah. All right, my dog is waking up, and that means I probably need to go. Justin, do we have a, a raid set up? Uh, yes, actually. Let's see here. Race. Race um, with a curie dog, because she's definitely got to go. So I may have to jump out on you fast, depending on how fast Justin can uh, find a raid. Sorry that I sprung it on you, but she just, like, sat up and has this look on her face, and I know that look. The look. Yeah, it's the look of, hey, I'm going to need OUT very, very soon, mama. Old dog, old bladder, old, old, uh, colon. Just kind of putting some water in my paint so it doesn't all dry out. That way it's easier to rinse out my palette when I come back. Functionality trick. Life hack. Life hack for, uh, well palettes. Putting some water will pre-loosen up your paint. And then you can clean your palette easier. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the uh, bright colors today, guys. We'll, we'll do some more tomorrow. We'll do the yellow and the uh, rich indigo. It's fun. Yeah, she doesn't need that, Francis, but she's good at kind of letting me know with her posture and her eyes that she needs to go, so I can almost always get her out. And we've got puppy pads if we really need them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All, All right. right. Got a raid set up for us. All right, who is it? Uh, brush for hire. Ooh, okay. We haven't rated them in my stream for a while. Or ever. Alrighty. Thanks, guys. And I will see you again tomorrow for yellow and for icy violet, okay? We'll keep on going. Have a great day. Don't forget, guys. We have uh, Proctor show this oh, afternoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. Don't forget Michael Proctor. Yes, and we have uh, special guest Jen Greenwald with us. Ooh, okay, so should cool. Be on uh, conversation, should we? We should have some fun this afternoon. Yes, tell her she has to heckle my, or uh, yeah, heckle Michael. I will do that. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. We will see you Bye. this afternoon.